So once again, thank you so much for joining us today on our 3D scan to 3D print workflow demo. We're very excited to be going over a full workflow of what it's like to use a Artec Space Fighter, but then also not only taking your scan um, and post-processing it, but then also taking that and actually producing a uh, 3D print, specifically on the Formlabs Form 3L. So a uh, couple things before we get started today. Most importantly, just want to introduce ourselves. So uh, today's speakers, uh, my name is Jason. I'm the marketing manager here at Source Graphics. And uh, I have been working in the additive industry now for about four years. And it's, uh, and it's an ever growing and something that I'm always learning something about. And in this particular webinar, in producing it, I feel like I've learned a lot. Uh, so very excited to be actually working uh, with Todd Debrasini, who is also with us today. Hey, everybody. Uh, Todd, I see you've joined this. Perfect. Todd, you are the author of, um, I, oh my gosh, why am I, <laughs> would you like to introduce sure. yourself? Um, How about I, I'm, I let you go yeah, ahead I'm Todd so. Debrasini, and you may be familiar with my book, Special Makeup Effects for Stage and Screen, uh, Making and Applying Prosthetics. I'm currently working on the fourth edition, which is kind of what got this whole webinar happening in the first place, is because I'm expanding the chapter on 3D printing now to include 3D scanning and source graphics and form labs have been extremely generous in letting me play with one of their three L's as well as Artec letting me uh, get my hands on the space spider to create some files that we're going to use in this in this webinar and I'm going to tell you I I am totally in hook line and sinker into scanning and 3D printing it's changed everything for me. Oh, it's awesome. Well, excited to uh, give you the opportunity to go ahead and uh, I'm a little nervous up, just because I'm following Rick Baker, who's a tough act to follow. Hey, that's okay. That's all right. It, it's going to be great. We're, we're, it's going to be a fun one for sure. Uh, but also on the call with us today and also uh, uh, with us is my colleague, Kevin Alvarado. Kevin is our 3D scanning expert. So if you have any questions about 3D scanning or if you have purchased probably a 3D scanner from us, uh, it's very likely that you've talked with Kevin. So, uh, or if you're interested, you will be talking with Kevin at some point. So you'll get a, a small taste of what it's like to, to get a demo from Kevin today. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and jump on to what exactly we're gonna be talking about today. So um, first off, we're gonna go into what it's actually like to use the Artec Space Fighter. Uh, Kevin here is going to uh, briefly go over the portfolio of our tech, so exactly what scanners are in the portfolio, and then what are the use cases for an Artec Space Spider. After that, he will actually do a live demonstration of the Space Spider in use. You'll get an angle right here, and then the front angle as well. Um, and then from that point, we're going to toss it over to Todd. Todd will take it from there and show us uh, what it's like to actually take your scan, post-process it, get it from there into ZBrush, and then from ZBrush, uh, one other step, and then into uh, Formlabs Preform into a print, which uh, I got to say, you guys are in for a treat on that for sure. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, quickly say this as well, chat features. So um, a lot of you have already figured it out, but you can use on the right-hand side of your screen chat features, uh, such as emoji reactions, as well as the chat box, just to leave a message. If you have any questions at all, you are more than welcome to leave them there. We'll make sure to answer it at the very end of the presentation. We have some time allotted for uh, Q&A. So with that, I am going to go ahead and hand it over to Kevin. Kevin is going to be doing the Artec Space Fighter demo. So I'll hand over the mic to you. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. Go ahead and click it right there. All right, hey everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, today I'm gonna to be using the Artec Space Spider. If you haven't seen it, this is the Space Spider. Um, Artec actually offers several different uh, 3D scanners. Uh, these have a pretty wide range of uses. Uh, they have the, the Artec Ray, the Leo, the Eva, the Eva Light, the Space Spider, and the Micro. Um, the main differences between them is actually the, the size of the objects that they can scan, as well as uh, the point accuracy that they have. Um, the Space Spider in particular has about a 50 micron uh, point accuracy. Uh, so you're talking about two thousandths of an inch, very, very accurate scans. Um, 
we're actually going to be uh, using the Space Spider mainly for um, uh, metrology purposes. Um, it's a blue light scanner, so it's very, very accurate. Um, and for a lot of the quality control purposes or metrology purposes that companies need, um, it's, it's a very good scanner. But um, it's twofold when you have uh, this extremely good accuracy, you're, you're dabbling into other industries as well. Um, obviously, now in the, in the movie industry, we're working with uh, visual effects and even props. Um, we work with medical uh, device companies uh, producing, uh, you know, very, very, uh, very particular and very um, uh, different, des different designs that need to be uh, very, very accurate with their, uh, with the scanning and with their actual design. Um, today I have a, a hand. This is actually a 3D printed hand. Uh, we'll be able to check out the layer lines and everything from the, from the 3D print. This is actually printed on the uh, the Ultimakers, so it's an FDM. We're going to jump over to Artec Studio. So this is actually the proprietary software that Artec offers. Um, it's very, very powerful. If I click the space spider once, it's going to give me a preview of my object that I can scan. You see as I get closer and as I get further, It'll give me that bar on the side that'll tell me, hey, you're out of range and you're within range. If I click it again, it'll start scanning for me. And stuff that's farther away is blue. Stuff that's closer is orangish red. So I want to stay in the green. It's telling me, you know, your scan's good quality. And I'm just going to start working my way around the object, making sure that I have pretty good coverage. You know, I might not capture everything and that's okay because we can go back in and we can get another scan and match them up together. But we're gonna get the best we can. And let me go ahead and stop it there. I'm gonna really quick look around my object and say, where are my pain points? Okay, there on the thumb, you know, some of the fingers, maybe a little back here on the pinky. So let's go ahead and just jump back in. And I'll start rescanning here. I'm really going to focus on the fingers now, especially, you know, inside of the thumb. Jump around. You know, under that pinky. Inside of the thumb. And I'll also give it some extra registration points. So now we have two scans. These can be turned on and off independently so that we can work on them piece by piece. And actually, you know, now that I notice it, I have a little bit missing down here as well on this side. I don't think that information is there. I'm going to turn the hand completely face down and actually get another scan. It's one of the great things about Artec is if you notice you're missing something, you can always just jump right in and add that information in. It's quite a breeze. So now we have all that. The first thing I'm going to want to do is delete all my excess information that I don't really need. Um, that's probably going to be this base down here. Um, my editor tool, I have my eraser. Favorite uh, tool actually in the eraser is going to be my base selection. It's an AI tool. If I highlight a little section, it's going to automatically let me delete everything that it registers as the base. I'm just going to go through. Of course, you have other tools. You know, you have your lasso. You have your rectangle tools. Um, depending on your use case or kind of what the situation is, you know, you're going to opt to use different tools. But now that I have my jumbled mess of just hands, um, I do need to align them. So I'm going to use auto alignment. Uh, this is my first option. And because the feature is actually, or the object is fairly unique in its features, um, you know, different length fingers. Um, it's not really a, a symmetrical or, or a um, repetitive featured object. Uh, it's able to recognize the different parts and be able to stitch them together accurately. If it didn't, um, I just pick three different points in the object and have it aligned uh, manually, but it's pretty smart in its uh, AI abilities. So next, I'm actually going to Typically, I'd run through, uh, you know, your registration, the fusion, um, 
you know, some of the post-processing, your small object filters and your mesh simplification. I'm actually going to run my autopilot right now and we're going to watch it do it itself. We're going to do water tight. Just going to skip through some of these and going to let it do its global registration on its own. This is going to align every frame within the scans. So not just align the three scans themselves, but it's going to do a very tight fit alignment with every single frame. Um, the outlier removal is going to get rid of some of these excess little bits out here. You know, some of these little floaters, some of the noise that isn't, isn't necessarily in the model and could possibly mess up that final model. So we'll watch that get deleted. Um, after their outlier removal, it's going to be your fusion. Uh, this is where you actually get your, your STL model. Um, you know, if you just did the fusion and you didn't do any of the other four steps, the small object filter, all that, you could export that as your principal model. Um, either in STLs, OBJs, PLY, ASC, um, you can do it in a number of mesh formats. Um, your small object filter and your mesh simplification, those are post-processing features. Um, kind of what it sounds like, small object filter is going to get rid of the little extraneous stuff that's left over after your fusion. Your mesh simplification is going to make your mesh more simple. Um, it's going to lower the amount of polygons used to recreate your object. Uh, so you're going to get a lower file size as well. You're going to get a little bit lower in the, um, I guess, in the accuracy and the resolution of your object. It's going to be a little bit less defined. Um, texturing, this is actually one of the cool parts of our tech. Even though it's a blue light scanner, it still gives you full color. So if you can see now, this is our basically our final model. You can see all the layer lines in it, but it's not a gold as you can obviously see your orange. The text string is going to put that gray back on. So if you have features um, that are, if, if you find a need to have color information there, either for reference information or, you know, especially in the movie industry, we have a lot of visual effects that are CGI stuff that um, requires this. Texturing can be a very powerful tool. So we got that color information right back. You can see all the different layer lines. And essentially, this would be my final model. I could take this uh, to a number of different programs. Um, you know, I could print it out myself. Um, in this case, we're going to be taking it over to ZBrush. Um, so from here, I'd, I'd like to pass it over to Todd. Um, I, I appreciate you guys taking some time to watch me go through that. Todd, do you mind if I actually cut in really no, quick? No, not at all. I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say really quick, I think it'd be good to show or uh, talk a little bit about um, this project in particular with Brandon, right? Yes. So if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen again really quick before we jump back over to you Absolutely. into into our tech studio. You got it. So yeah, let me go ahead and take over the screen here really quick. All right. Perfect. So should be able to see that, right? Yeah. There we go. I'll let you uh, go ahead and, and uh, demonstrate that for us or talk about what's going okay. on. Okay. Well, um, I'm scanning. I, I've got him sitting on a, on a turntable that I got on eBay. That's it's like a foot diameter that will hold up to 250 pounds and can go really slowly. So I can rotate him without having to do it myself. It's almost like working on a stationary object because this, working with the space spiders, a, a little bit like flying a helicopter. Um, it's kind of like alternating between patting your head and rubbing your stomach and rubbing your head and patting your stomach back and forth, back and forth, because you've got to be looking at a, at a monitor to make sure that you've got it, the scanner at the right distance while holding the scanner in position. There's a, there's a learning curve involved with this process. Uh, fortunately, as Kevin showed, you know, you can take multiple scans and blend them all together. Uh, but it, take, yeah, it so takes a little practice. Here too, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it does. If you want, um, from here too, uh, you can talk a little bit about just briefly what you'll be showing in, in our tech studio before you uh, go. I know I think Kevin did a, a little bit of that already. Yeah, but, so uh, well, your, we're going to... You know, eliminate the noise, done. which you can do with uh, the eraser tool. You can use the, the lasso and the rectangle. Um, you can cut off portions that, that kind of get in the way. One of the things that uh, I think the, the space spider, unfortunately, is not great at because it was designed as an engineering tool, not, not with entertainment um, needs in mind, is it doesn't deal with hair particularly well. So, which is why if you look at the, the scan of, of Brandon, we don't really have the back of his head, even though his head's mostly shaved. We put a 
wig cap on him and it still didn't get uh, that area perfectly, but it's fine because we can, we can deal with that in ZBrush pretty easily. So I'm going to get back into, can do the, the global alignment. Um, you know, uh, Kevin showed you autopilot, which kind of does everything automatically. I prefer to not do that um, just because I've had better luck, more, more precise luck if you do things a la carte rather than all at once. So you've got outlier removal, which he showed. I prefer to go in and, and just do little bits and bobs individually. Then you've got fast fusion, which is exactly what it says. It fuses the all of this point data into a mesh rather quickly. Uh, you're going to get, this is the method that's going to give you the least amount of detail. And if you are really interested in keeping skin pore texture and wrinkles, fast fusion is not the way to go. Then you've got smooth fusion, which is designed specifically for dealing with slight movement. Uh, it will help compensate for that. You're going to lose a little resolution in the process, but if you've got fidgety fingers, that might be the way to go. And then you have sharp fusion, which is going to take the longest to process, but it's going to give you the highest level of, of resolution and detail. And I think from that we can, uh, Jason, we can just jump to the finished mesh if you want. Sure thing. Yeah. One sec. You'll notice that it's a one-sided mesh. It doesn't have, uh, you're not seeing back faces on the mesh, nor are we seeing the back of the head, but we've got great detail here. Uh, neck wrinkles, poor texture. All of the landmarks are there. Um, Louis Zakarian, who's the makeup department head at Saturday Night Live, loves being able to keep all of that poor texture detail into it. It's not as important for me as long as all of the, the actual geometric anatomical landmarks are there. That's all I really care about, but you can have it both ways. So now we're going to go into ZBrush and play with this, this mesh. And we're going to look at the hard way first. Uh, where you can bring it in and what you need to do is get, have some reference images. I fortunately had some reference images of, of Brandon from another project, uh, so they're not exactly what I would, would do if I were going to be scanning him and, and doing it all from, from scratch again. But you want to have front, back, sides, top if possible so that when you bring the mesh in you can load up these reference images on image planes in zbrush and then add uh, you can insert or, or append spheres as additional sub tools in zbrush and i hope this is not sounding like swahili that you've got some zbrush experience that you can then use the move tool and and a couple of other tools to push and pull these spheres to fill in the gaps of the, the body of the head, behind the ears, the back of the neck, and so on, and then Boolean all of these pieces together to create one, hopefully one complete mesh. But you run the risk of the Boolean creating more problems for you and having to go back in and do even more fixing. But there is an easier way. And I think you were saying, Todd, that this is the this is the hard way, the hard right? Because there's an easy way and a hard way. This is the hard way. Is is the open yeah, mesh? Yeah. When you've got when you've got gaps in the, in a scan that need to be filled, I now know a better way. So you can take that mesh that you've got 
back into our tech studio and there is a function called fix holes and it will read all of the geometry and close everything pretty intuitively. I mean, it doesn't flesh out the body of the head, but now it is one closed object that you can bring back into ZBrush and using these same reference images, push and pull with the move tool and the damn standard and, and possibly inflate and accomplish your task in a fraction of the time it would take to do it by adding uh, multiple sub tools. Perfect. Did you want to showcase that at, at all? Yeah, time? Like, yeah, I want to make sure if, that... if, if everybody's interesting in, in seeing that, I got a got a file here ready to go. We can get in there and, and give it a shot. So here's here's that closed mesh we just our tech studio. I don't know if you can hear that rustling in the background. It's one of my cats rummaging around on my desk. Uh, so I'm going to go up here to the texture menu and dock it on the side. And down here at the bottom of the texture menu is image plane. And you can, this is where you load your, your reference images. So we'll get Brandon's left. I can load the front image. And so really quick right here, Todd, right? You're, you're, what you're going to be doing is actually building out the rest Correct. of yeah, yeah. the That's model, exactly what right? I'm going to be doing. Okay. And then one, one more. And I... I don't think I stored these other views, so I may have to do them again. And this should have rotated him. You can also adjust the opacity so you can see through the model to the reference image. And just kind of line these up as best you can, kind of ballpark it. So we'll just we'll just work from this one right now. So I'm going to come up to my brush menu and select the move brush. There are keyboard shortcuts for that. And I'm going to just go to the front for a second. And my reference image there disappeared, so there we go. So with the move tool and symmetry added, I don't know why it's not automatically giving me the left view, it should be. I can immediately start bringing out
Brandon's head. Much, much easier than if I had Anyway, I can keep keep futzing with this. It's not doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. Line the images are not there. I, Did you get, I, get the I idea, right? Say, I think, exactly, exactly. So from here at this point, once you you know utilize the move tool, right? From there is when you would actually be able to export yeah, the model. Can, once right? we get it to export that. the way we want it to, then we can export that finished model um, as an object and bring it into. Um, well, we need to go from from ZBrush into Autodesh Mesh, Mesh Mixer because there's a step that that we need to to do that unfortunately is is not possible to do in the the Formlabs preform software, and that's to hollow the model and add some some vent holes to help prevent suction um, on the print bed. As, as we're printing the object. But in Mesh Mixer, it's, it's, it's a real simple process. Um, I go in and inspect it to make sure there aren't any, any errors in the model and Mesh Mixer will automatically fix any problems. And then you can hollow the model out and you can determine the thickness you want. It defaults at two millimeters, which I've found to be just fine. And then you can add holes and depending how you want to orient the model on the build plate in preform, you can then place the holes where you want it. Hit apply and it uh, mesh mixer will drill those holes. Then you can export the model, save it as a hollow model, load it into mesh mixer and you're ready to get it lined up and sliced for printing. And so right here, this is the actual model. So this is your model, right? Uh, right. Yeah, this, this is, is Brandon's the finished, face. finished you model of taken, Brandon. And you just save it as, I think you may have mentioned this, but just to clarify really quick, you, you save just as a, either an OBJ or STL from Correct. Mesh Mixer. Yeah. Which and is then one of the nice things about the software, yeah, yeah, is, is yeah. Um, Preform will, will handle either an OBJ or an STL. It doesn't matter. So you don't have to convert your your file from the, when you export out of ZBrush into anything other than an OBJ uh, because the software will deal with it just fine. Again, so when you're actually in Preform, right, a couple of things that you, you want to do is obviously generate the supports where there's any sort of red areas and- Correct, and um, the software you're really looking for on the right -hand where, side there. where it needs the supports and you can adjust the, you know, how many supports there are and and how how big they are, how 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 large the the touch area is. Um, and I've I've pretty much left it at, at the default because I've found with a model this size, going any lower than than the default full amount will result in the software saying. No, you're not going to be able to print this, Bubba. <laughs> I think, too, one thing is, you know, the reason you hollow it out, right? If you look oh, at yeah. the model, that's if, a huge model it as it is already. If, it would it weigh, would weigh it a would be a, a brick. And, and you would waste so much material. There's no need for it to be, to be solid. And if you need to have a solid uh, object for, for sculpting and, and mold making, you can make a mold of of it once it's done printed and cast it in in um, epoxy or urethane or whatever material you need it to be in as a solid piece that's going to be much less expensive but the thing i love about the, the 3l is how automated the whole system is 
the the resin comes in cartridges that it that's automatically uh, dispensed into the print bed. Once once you've got it all set up and primed for a print, you send the the print from your computer to the printer via Wi-Fi. It's fully automated, you can, and you can even monitor it from your computer. It tells you how much resin is left in each each of the cartridges, um, how long it's going to take to print. You can probably hear in the background, I've got a print going right now. The 3L is singing the song of its people. Uh, it's, it's a very happy camper right now. And and I have, uh, gosh, I can't think how many. I've printed a lot of things since I've had this printer in a house. And I've only had one failed print. I don't know what happened. Some Somehow the signal just it just stopped mid print, um, but I'm reprinting that same piece right now and it's almost finished and it's going great. I've had 99.9% .9 success rate with this printer and the automatic function of it is, is a dream. And so right here, this is your, so the scan that we saw pretty much at the beginning, right? right? And yep, then that's the, that's the actual the finished print. mesh on the left uh, before we took it into ZBrush and built out the rest of Brandon's head. But it, it's the, it's a great system. Uh, and I think yeah. you I have think the print, right? Yeah, I do you have the print, right? Do you yeah, want to show that really quick? It's it's right here. I mean, it's it's life size. Uh, the the scanner knows exactly where everything is in 3D space. So when you scan, it is it is completely to scale. You don't have to do any any alterations to it whatsoever. Awesome. Well, that is, yeah, I mean, that's, I think we covered a lot in, in a really short amount yeah, of time. I, I think our, yeah. our run through took us an hour and a half. <laughs> so we did, we did well. Yeah. But no, so that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously, right. The, once you get into it and you're actually doing a lot of the, uh, the work to it, there's going to be, um, you know, there's going to be, it's going to be a lot longer than obviously what mm -hmm. we did on, on the workflow and it's going to take you longer, but still it gives you a good overview of really what it's like to go from, from scan to print. So um, before we actually jump into uh, Q and a, just really quick next steps, right? Um, one of my favorite things throughout this process and working with Todd was to see all of the prints that he did. So if you want to see some of those prints, you can follow him on Instagram and he has a lot of those uh, first prints already on there. Uh, that he's done on the 3L. So you get a, a good view of the Brandon prints and then uh, a couple of the other ones too. There was one, uh, yeah, yeah I, did a, I, I won't go I did a, did a prop, uh, a Halloween prop um, for a, a live TV show uh, where I printed a, a full-size Academy Award on the 3L. That one I did see, yeah. Yeah, so make sure to follow him. It's a, it, it, you're gonna love it. I, I love your account. Thank you. Todd. Thank you. I, I try to have fun <laughs> sure. with it. I try to make it informative and goofy at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then if you'd like to see more from us, you uh, can follow us on Instagram as well. We are at source underscore graphics. And we oftentimes will post um, either informative videos or just some of the latest uh, news that is going on with the various manufacturers that we represent, you know, from form like Forum Labs or our tech. So if you want to stay up to date, you can follow us there. Uh, and then also, if you would like to either uh, get a demonstration on the Artec Space Spider and maybe talk with Kevin, um, you can set up a um, in-person or online demonstration. We are able to do that. You can email us. You can just email info at sourcegraphics.com or even, even give us a phone call. Um, you will likely also talk to Kevin or myself or, or anybody on our team, uh, along with uh, demoing the uh, Form Labs Form 3L, which is actually just behind Kevin here. So um, again, you don't even have to be in the local Southern California area. If you are 
even on the East Coast or um, you know, Midwest, we are able to do online demonstrations similar to what you're seeing right now and, and uh, answer all your questions. So, so. And with that, um, just uh, again, briefly about us, I didn't uh, go into this at the beginning, mostly because I wanted to make sure that we dove straight into uh, the demonstration. But, you know, Source Graphics, what our mission is, is really to provide the best solutions for people who are looking to be creators or, you know, really changing our world uh, in the additive space. So, um, you know, we're a leading 3D solutions provider here in the U.S. Um, in business since 1989. And we really do love to work with our customers. You know, we really take a, a customer first approach and make sure that uh, we're being, you know, your trusted partner. And, um, you know, so you can come to us for anything, whether it's 3D scanning, 3D printing, materials, uh, we handle it all. So we really try to be a one-stop shop for, for all of our customers. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in and you haven't worked with us yet, please do reach out. We'd love to, we'd love to work with you. There's some good questions over so here. So with that, there are, there are some good questions. So, um, let's see if we actually- Guillermo's right got here. one. How do you do the eyelashes and when, um, how do you get rid of them from the scan? Uh, that's, that's pretty easy to just smooth out with the smooth brush in ZBrush uh, to, to eliminate those. And then Peter's asking about a full head print to, to get the- I got you, Todd. Let me oh, go okay. from the top here really okay. quick. So let's go with uh, Chris at the, let's see, Chris had asked, or yeah, Chris had asked, is there a reason for your print orientation um, in preform specifically? Yes. It seems like the supports under the chin would increase your manual finishing time, but yeah, if you wanna go. Um, it doesn't really increase the finishing time that much because the, the support contacts are, are um, pretty small and you can clip those off with almost no need for for uh, anything, I mean, it's under the chin, and it just doesn't doesn't really. It was easy. It was easy. Not too much standing. Yeah, it's it's easy. Uh, takes takes almost no time to deal with. And then Peter asks for a full head print to get to the 35 micron settings. What is the print time? I think Brandon's head took three or four days to print. It took a while. And, and I will say too, the, the type of material that you use is also going to be dependent. Yeah, so I would use another the, common, the, the model V3, which is, actually a dental resin if i'm not mistaken yeah but it's a really it's flesh it's still a color. great material to use for it's 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 got the flesh tone but it's also highly accurate as well so if you think about dental models um you know those in the in the dental industry want their models to be incredibly accurate very so strong. i think even if you are working on prosthetics you also want your model to be incredibly accurate so it's uh got high accuracy and it also prints very fast in comparison to like a gray resin, which is um, one of the other standards if you are looking for, um, you know, really high detail. Um, so Model V3 is one of my favorite resins to print. Uh, it's been great for me. I've, I've loved it and it's very strong. Okay, um, how did you uh, see this is, yeah, Guillermo, I think you started to answer this topic. Guillermo asked, how did you do the eyelashes? Uh, they just, they just scanned. I didn't didn't need to do anything um i would probably get rid of those if i was going to do a do a mold and a cast of this because you don't really need the eyelashes in there so i can just i could get rid of those very easily with the, the smooth brush yeah smooth tool and, and yeah, we'll brush. The, the space yeah the space spider is a very accurate scanner so being able to capture you know eyelashes with the with it is is Pretty, uh, pretty feasible. Um, when you're getting over to the big hair areas, that's where you really start to lose your tracking. But um, because it's pretty minimal on the face, um, eyelashes tend to be pretty easy, but especially with Yeah, I, I don't know if you can see, but um, we got Brandon's eyebrows also. Scanned pretty, pretty well. I marked this as a question, but I think you actually had touched on this already, Todd. So it's the, uh, can you adjust the outlier removal 
Uh, I don't use it because it takes too much away from the model. Yeah, I like or maybe uh, Kevin might be able to answer that. Yeah, you can adjust the outlier removal. Um, you can have it, you know, grab a little bit more information and let a little bit uh, more go. Um, there's a couple of parameters that you can change in there. Uh, we we can definitely go into it a little bit a little bit later, but um, there, there's a couple of parameters in the, there you can adjust slightly, and it'll either take away more, or take away less. I will say that I think even if you're not doing scanning yourself, um, having access to Artex Studio software can be well worth it to help clean up models that you've got. Here, here's actually another question, or it was actually more of a comment that uh, P uh, Peter had made at towards the beginning, a live hand, because this was, in, was Kevin was doing the uh, 3D printed hand, a live hand can be a challenge because people have a tendency to move their fingers during the scan. This is, this is very, very true. People are very difficult to scan. Um, as I said, these are down to about 50 microns in accuracy, others about 100 microns. And, you know, if you move just slightly, they'll, they'll be able to pick that up. Um, so people tend to be one of the more difficult things to scan out there. All right, let's see if we have any more. So there were a couple Justin of... asked if it was printed at uh, uh, the 0.05 millimeter layers. Yes, it was. Okay, so Noah has asked, what is that spray bottle next to the hand used for? Is it necessary for all scans? Yeah, so this is actually called ASEV spray. It's an evaporative uh, scanning spray that, you know, these, these scanners that you're using in light, to be able to capture the shape of these objects. And if light is being reflected or uh, diffused in a certain way, you're not gonna be able to capture your item. This is the case with anything transparent, uh, anything chrome-like, um, and then naturally black tends to absorb all light uh, and white tends to reflect all light. So you can get some weird uh, properties with both uh, the tail ends of those. But um, spray a little bit of this on, you can scan anything that's transparent, chrome, doesn't matter what the surface finish is you'll be able to scan it and it evaporates too. So it's not like you have to spray a bunch of primer spray paint on it and kind of ruin the part. Um, we use it on uh, very delicate items, uh, archeology, span uh, we use it on car paint, um, a vast number of things we've used on. All right, and then let's see, Guillermo asks, talk about hair, do you always do it in post-production? or in the, I guess, post-processing. Um, I don't know that I understand it. But, um, um, I, I would say probably, yes. I think it's that, you know, unless you're looking for a, a, something that's gonna be used as a, as a fine art object where you want stylized hair, um, you're gonna be doing, doing hair as a, you know, either with ventilated hair pieces or punched into silicone rather than using uh, the textured hair that you scanned because it's you're not going to get the detail of, of an actual strand of hair. Got it. All right. I'll leave it open for just a couple more minutes here in case anybody else has any other questions. Well, Guillermo also asked, do you use a spray to try to capture hair? I have tried using spray. I've, I've tried using baby powder on facial hair to help facilitate capturing it. And hair just is, is tough to do with a scanner. Yeah. All right, so it looks like, I think that's it in terms of questions. Oh, Peter. Uh, Peter says, I use Tenactin powder spray ah. for beards. Oh, there you go. Have to give that a shot. Tough actin, Tenactin. <laughs> I, I believe there's, there's one more. Uh, when you're using ZBrush, are you using a, a desktop or a tablet? Um, I have both. I have uh, ZBrush on my laptop, which is a, a touch screen, and I've got a tablet uh, for my big desktop that I'm talking to you guys right now on. 
I'd love to get a big um, Cintiq this at is some a, point. Ah. I was going to say, perfect segue, because I was going to end it on, Todd, what's, uh, what's new, what's uh, next for you, I guess? What are what are you doing? And Neil has asked, you know, when is uh, V4 of your book coming out? Um, well, I am working on it now. Uh, my delivery date to my publisher is mid-January of, of 2023. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will have a fall release for the fourth edition, maybe in time for the prosthetics event in the UK next year. Oh, well, I'm good. You got to let us know when it comes. Oh, out absolutely. You guys, you guys will you. get a copy for sure. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well, perfect. Um, last, last question. I'm thinking we'll wrap it up, but this is uh, from Guillermo again. Any particular pen for the tablet that, that you're using? Um, I, the one I got for my, for my laptop is, um, is a bamboo pen that I really like. Um, I've got a, an Apple Pencil for my iPad Pro, and then the I have a Vinsa tablet for my other computer that I just am using the stylus that, that came with it. But I really like the bamboo uh, stylus a lot. Awesome. Well, again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate your time. And it was an hour out of your day on a Thursday. But regardless, thank you so much for tuning in. Todd, thank you so much for all your work. And it's been such a pleasure to work with you uh, throughout this process. And hope we were able to uh, to provide some, oh, some feeling good mutual. input thank you guys. the next version of your book. Thank you guys for being so helpful and, and accommodating. It's, it's, it's been a, an enormous educational experience for me. It's um, the the chapter on 3D scanning and 3D printing is a major update, and I I think I certainly hope everyone will get get a lot out of it. I I have. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks again, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Take care. Have a good rest Bye. of your day. Thanks. Bye.